Hello everyone, welcome to session 14 of LTEC 654 Programming Games and Simulations. In this week's video, we have a little bit of housekeeping to do. Specifically, I have a few updates related to Canvas and I want to give you an update on a due date for an upcoming assignment. And then we'll take a few minutes to review Shell's perspective on game mechanics. So in terms of Canvas update, in case you haven't noticed in the overview module, I've added a new item called All Tutorials. That takes you to a page listing all of the tutorials in one place. And I'll continue to be adding to those tutorials in the weeks ahead. So I hope that this page can help you move around and find the information you need easily. Now, next up, I have a due date update. Now, recall that deliverable number one of Game Production Project 2 is due on Monday, November 28th. Well, someone has reached out to me and asked because of the Thanksgiving holiday that it actually might be better if that was due on Tuesday. November 29th instead. So it's due a day later than it initially was. So that gives everybody a little bit of freedom to enjoy the holiday weekend. So take advantage of that if it is helpful to you. Now that mid-project video reflection, you're probably wondering where to post that. I have added a discussion thread called Critical Reflection 7 mid-project video reflection. So all you have to do is go to the Game Production Project 2 assignment, and then in step six, you'll see the link to Critical Reflection 7, where you can post your video reflections. Now, finally, one last thing related to the calendar. I'm going to be traveling on Tuesday, November 29th. So session 15 of the class is going to be released on Wednesday, November 30th. Just a heads up that that will come out one day later than usual. So in the last couple of minutes of this Thanksgiving session, I want to talk a little bit about Shell's take on game mechanics. If you haven't read that article yet, I really strongly encourage you to do this. But ultimately, Shell argues that game mechanics are the interactions and relationships that remain when all of the aesthetics, technology, and story are stripped away from games. And so I thought that was interesting. It's emphasizing interactions and relationships as being kind of the core part or mechanics of games. And he goes on to write that game designers must learn to use their x-ray vision to be able to see past the skin of a game and quickly discern the skeleton, which is defined by the game mechanics. So again, a kind of another interesting take. And I know some of you in this class actually have some of that x-ray vision because you've thought about games and game mechanics in the past. For others of you, this is kind of new. But one of the reasons I want to talk about it is, of course, is thinking about how you can program different game mechanics using the tools of coding that we've been learning in Godot. So let's talk a little bit about Shell's taxonomy of game mechanics. Now, he's pretty clear to argue that this really isn't an academic or a scientific taxonomy. This is a taxonomy he's developed personally to help him categorize and understand games. So let's walk through the seven game mechanics of Shell's taxonomy. So the first mechanic that Shell introduces is the idea of space. And he argues that every game takes place in some kind of space. He talks about kind of the magic circle of gameplay. You're either in the game world or you're not. And he argues that space defines the various places that can exist in a game and how those places are related to one another. And he argues that game spaces can be either discrete or continuous, they can have a number of different dimensions, and they have bounded areas that may or may not be connected. So I'd like you to think a little bit about how space has been used in some of the games that we have studied this semester, such as Beats Empire and or our Lemonade Stands. The second mechanic Shell introduces is the mechanic of time. And he argues that we often try to control time as game designers. And he points out that time can be discrete or continuous. 
turn-based games, for example, use discrete units of time to control the flow chronologically of gameplay, whereas most action games use continuous time. There's either a clock running down, the world never really stops. Time is just moving continuously forward. And so think a little bit about how time was used in our postmodern lemonade stands. Now, the third mechanic in the taxonomy are objects, attributes, and states. And of course, we all know that the space of games is filled with objects. And these objects include characters or props or tokens or scoreboards. And Shell likes to think of these objects as, quote unquote, the nouns of game mechanics. And importantly, these nouns or these objects have one or more attributes. One of those attributes, of course, is the position in the game space. And we can think about objects having many different attributes. So, for example, in the lemonade stand game, you can think about lemons having a certain value and there's a certain quantity of them. And they may be good lemons or they may have gone bad, rotten lemons. And so those are different states that those objects might have. And of course, that often influences their value in the game world. The fourth mechanic is actions, and actions are the verbs of game mechanics. Actions explain what can the players do. And generally speaking, actions break in down into basic actions and strategic actions. Basic actions are those actions that a player can take, whereas strategic actions are the actions that are only meaningful in the larger picture of the game, and they have to do with how the player is using basic actions to achieve a particular goal in the game. And so you can think about in our lemonade stands, what are the base actions that were possible, but what might have been some strategic actions players might have taken to actually do better in the game over a certain amount of time. The fifth mechanic are rules, and these are arguably the most fundamental mechanic in games. And they define the space, the timing, the objects, the actions, the consequences of the actions, the constraints on those actions, and the goals themselves. In other words, rules make possible all the other mechanics and add the crucial thing that makes a game a game, which is goals. That brings us to game mechanic number six, which is skill. And as you know, every game requires players to exercise certain skills. And if a player's skill level is a good match to the game's difficulty, then the player will feel challenged and stay in a certain state of flow. Most games require a blend of different skills from players. And generally, skills can be divided into physical, mental, and social skills. And if we think about our postmodern lemonade stands, there really wasn't much in the way of physical skill required or social skill because it wasn't a multiplayer game, but it was really a mental skill. And thinking about processing all of the information about the weather and the number of ingredients and how to combine those ingredients in some way that would result in the maximum number of sales. But other games, of course, test more our physical skills and or our social skills. And the seventh game mechanic that Shell talks about is chance. And we know that chance is an essential part of games because chance means uncertainty and uncertainty means surprises. And we know that uncertainty is a formal element of games. And Shell talks about how surprises are an important source of human pleasure and one of the ingredients of making something fun. And so all of you programmed a certain level of chance into your lemonade stand simulations. And of course, think about how in other games, the game mechanic of chance plays out. So that's a quick recap of Shell's taxonomy of game mechanics. And I hope that is helpful as you think about what you're producing for Game Production Project 2. So with that, I just want to say Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I hope you have a safe and relaxing holiday with family and friends. And with that, I'll say goodbye, and I'll see you in Canvas.